Welcome to the Spring 2025 Clemson Electrical and Computer Engineering Senior Design Showcase. This project, called Brakes on a Train, developed a functional prototype mesh network of transceivers using the LoRa, that is Long Range Wireless Protocol. This project had a budget of $200 per module with the intended use case of one module per train car. I want to recognize the hard work of all eight team members on the car radio team. This project would not have been possible without everyone's contributions. Railroad safety is a critical modern issue. Last year, in 2024, there were a staggering number of derailments and collisions involving Class 1 railroads in the United States. This results in injury, loss of life, and property damage. It is hypothesized that the stopping time of trains could be reduced by as much as 60% if it were possible to bleed brake pressure at each car rather than only at the locomotives. Additionally, this project aims to provide real-time location and speed data for each car, improving train safety and providing a trackable car identification. As trains can be up to 200 cars in length, we further aim to provide the reliability of communication with the end of train device by implementing a mesh network rather than a simple point-to-point -point system that is currently used. This project establishes a reliable mesh network between our dev board nodes. We established a messaging protocol with the base station team. We are capable of GPIO enunciation upon receipt of a command, and we have completed the GPS and IMU data retrieval. Our demonstration train model utilizes two Raspberry Pi Pico W microcontrollers. One Pico interfaces with the WaveShare LoRa radio hat and communicates with the peripheral control Pico via UART. The peripheral control Pico interfaces with the IMU, GPS, OLED, and solenoid emergency brake. The chassis is a custom 3D printed train car model. The final bill of materials is $120. This can also be implemented with the STM32 board for a similar cost. However, the LoRa radio module for the STM32 board brings the total bill of materials cost to $205. For hardware design, um, we had a few requirements that we had to focus on. We had to utilize the STM32 L4 microcontroller for its low power functionality. The SX1276 was our radio chipset we used. It used a LoRa antenna with an SMA interface, and then we had our IMU and GPS that we had to integrate as well. And all of this is to be powered by a 5 volt supply. The system must listen for commands over the mesh network and respond according to the messaging protocol established with the base station team. We must have a variable percentage GPIO output for the braking, and we also must integrate the GPS and other peripherals. Another requirement was the wake from low power upon IMU input. However, we determined that the implementation of this feature on the STM32 dev boards was significantly different than the implementation would be on the final PCB design. So that is an opportunity for future development on the project. Mestastic is an open source mesh network protocol. It has native support for the RP2040 platform, but is underdeveloped for the STM32 L4 dev boards that we used. This required significant custom firmware to be written by the software team. Each node rebroadcasts the first instance of a message that it receives. MeshTastic also has a built-in traceroute function, which allows for quick diagnostics of message path and signal-to-noise ratio. The core of our project revolves around a mesh network. Therefore, we had to spend a considerable amount of time working on our MeshTastic implementation. In order to do this, we began by creating custom variant and platform IO files, which are used to configure MeshTastic with the STM32L4 microcontroller and all of the dev board pinouts. MeshTastic has modules, which we were able to create our own in addition to their predefined modules in order to interface with all peripherals as well as generating replies on received messages. Any packets we received where there were message flags that did not match any expected actions resulted in a packet being sent. So this flowchart here kind of shows our basic MeshTastic protocol, where when we received a message, we check to see if the message flags match, complete an action, and then listen to new packets. Our communication protocol methodology revolved around building a concise, clear communication protocol that allows us to transmit data we need. 
we designate a single bit to determine whether a packet is a request or a response command in order to simplify packet handling. We added other bit options for indicating origin and broadcast type, as well as minimizing payload size by reducing our GPS data down from 82 bytes to 12 bytes and our IMU data from 28 bytes to 14 bytes. Further looking into our communication protocol, we have meshtastic packet headers that are 16 bytes and we can add up to 237 bytes for our own payload. To reduce transmission time, we have our current largest payload set to 30 bytes. As part of these 30 bytes, all packets are going to contain a 2-byte header that we created with the train car ID and message flags. The first byte of the train car is just an unsigned binary representation of its radio number. And then the lower byte is the message flags that tell us the origin, whether it's a broadcast message or a point-to-point -point message, what the command is, as well as if it's a request or a response. Going back to our communication protocol, um, we can see here some results for timing. Um, this is part of our max 46 byte packet payload. We can see here that our time on air is about 682 milliseconds. Um, from MeshTastic, we can also see some data as we ran our tests and found that this was an accurate simulation. We had packets taking about 750 milliseconds to send and receive. We wanted to examine firmware variants based on our MCUs and then create and modify those variants with the designated pins for our specific setup with the Nucleo dev board and the SX1276 radio hat. We then went into MeshTastic's reply module to use as a base, and then modified the way it handles packets to determine how we want to reply to them. So whenever we receive a message, we parse out the message flags, and then determine what action we should be taking. Our methodology for peripheral integration was pretty straightforward. We initially just used basic communication between peripherals and the dev board. And then we integrated that within MeshTastic using C++ with some Python scripts to interact with the peripherals. Doing this with a dev board was similar. We began with a basic C++ library and modified that to fit our needs and then ported that over to MeshTastic. As part of this, in the reply module, we had to do our protocol handling and peripheral support um, for the Pico W interface for the physical train car demo. To better understand how large metallic objects such as train cars could affect signal propagation, we conducted testing using MeshTastic's traceroute function in a parking lot. The transmission began to become unreliable at a signal-to-noise ratio below 5 decibels. This occurred at about 550 feet for extreme obstructions and about 700 feet for moderate obstructions, that is, with a line of sight. It is important to note that this is a point-to-point -point test and does not take advantage of the benefits of a mesh network. This is the ANSYS HFSS design software suite. It is designed to be able to simulate 3D electromagnetic uh, simulations of high-frequency devices. This is the ANT916CWRH antenna. That is currently being used by the car radio and the base station team as their primary LoRa antenna. Uh, the design parameters of which uh, were taken from both the antenna's data sheet and from in-person measurements. The results that we got were relatively mixed. The S11 parameter, which is plotted here, had a maximum negative value of negative uh, 1.67 decibels, the center frequency of 910 megahertz. Uh, an ideal value for return loss is about uh, negative 10 decibels or ideally uh, below negative 20, uh, which indicates that we have relatively poor matching on our signal is being reflected um, as it gets to our antenna from our transmission line. Uh, the gain plot that is shown here also demonstrates that with a uh, maximum gain value of one decibel, uh, but it does show that we have a relatively large uh, three decibel bandwidth of 106 degrees with a center angle of 86 degrees. Because of this, we would highly recommend to Aronix to be able to switch over to an antenna that has higher directivity so that you are not losing significant uh, signal in the upward and downward direction. Here's the H plane, the E plane, and the different permutations that we measured for our S11 parameter. Here's the three-dimensional gain plot, and here's the voltage standing wave ratio that we were able to measure for this antenna. 
some challenges and bottlenecks we experienced um, was developing firmware variants for the unsupported MCUs. Um, this involved spending a lot of time trying to make sure the pinouts were correct, making sure we were using the correct processor. As well as this, the dev board was too large for the breadboard, so we had to use Raspberry Pi Picos. We were, had to turn and use, instead of just one Pico, we had to use two due to uh, limited pin connections for all of our peripherals. Another challenge we encountered was null characters in the communication protocol. So if any byte we needed to transmit was a null character, it initially resulted in us not sending the full packet because it was being treated as a null terminated string. Um, we had to resolve this issue by instead telling MeshTastic that, hey, a null character doesn't end the string, it instead is just a byte that we need and predefined whatever length of data we needed to transmit. We also had some issues converting peripheral modules to a common language. We had a lot of modules in Python initially, and then we had to convert those to C++. The end goal for this project is system implementation on a printed circuit board. Another team designed a board during the semester with the same STM32 processor and peripherals. The next step for this project would be porting the custom MeshTastic firmware to the purpose-built PCB. As previously mentioned, the implementation of the wake from motion feature still needs to be developed in order to enable a power saving idle mode for the system. Another feature of interest is logging network data, such as nearby nodes and network performance. There is also further research to determine a more suitable choice for a directional antenna. We would like to express our gratitude to the Clemson ECE department, especially Dr. Hassan Raza and Dr. Tassin Raza, for their support throughout the project. We would also like to thank our industry sponsor, Aronix, for the resources to pursue this project.